Today's video begins the process of turning the design of this model into something suitable for Sandling Junction. Hi, welcome back to Bexhill West. I'm James. Now before we get into today's video proper, I just wanted to say a really massive thank you to everybody who's already subscribed to this channel. Now I know that most of you have come across from Paul Apps's very kind shout out he gave me last week, uh, and I'm grateful to everybody who has. It's been really very overwhelming, uh, and, and the number of very, very kind comments and suggestions that have come through the comments uh, section on my previous videos has been really interesting, nice to read, um, and very supportive and encouraging. So thank you all very much indeed. I'm, I don't really know what to say. To be honest, I thought we might, if I worked really hard at it, might be able to get to 100 subscribers by Christmas. That was my plan. Well, we've, we've passed the 100 mark now, and I'm so very grateful to all of you. Thank you. So what we see before us is my model of the engine shed from Bexhill West. In fact, this really is a prototype of my model for Bexhill West. It's still unfinished. It isn't even glued together. However, it was this that caught Paul's eye and he thought that he might like something similar for the Ashford area of his model railway layout. This is an example of a north light shed whereby the windows are in the shorter of the two kind of roof faces. Now typically these windows would face northwards so the building would only let in light from the north which of course would preclude direct sunlight so there'd be no shadows and what have you inside the building. However where this building was located in Bex Hill these faces face southwards so the principle of the north light design was lost. I suspect there the design of the roof was chosen more from a, an economy of uh, building it purpose rather than the, the, the north light facility, but it doesn't matter. This was the design of the roof in Bexhill, and this is what Paul's shed will have. Now in my design, the roof comes off. So these panels lift straight out, and we can look at those in just a moment and we can have a look inside. If we look inside, you can see the structure of the building. We've got, we've got the walls and we've got the ironwork that would support the roof structures. Um, and I've incorporated this channel section, which would be the rainwater gutters from the, the fall off off of the roof. I've still yet to fit the downpipes which would come on these brick piers. Inside the shed we've got the smoke hoods, I'm not sure what these really call, obviously funnel the smoke up from the engines inside and these are designed to clip into the steel work that's been put into the building um, and then the roof drops over the top. On this example I've sort of quickly put some roof detail in. I'm not sure if this is entirely accurate or not, but it's sufficient when you look through the north light openings to reveal some of that structure inside and it, it looks okay. If we lift out this front wall section, which might be a bit fiddly, it will reveal the method used to hold the ironwork in place, the steelwork. So that is all recessed into the wall and that repeats all the way along for each of these sections. So actually this building can completely come to bits. I can take it apart down to its raw components um, and, and change things and stuff still needs to be painted. For example, the inside of this is completely wrong. I just gave it a quick coat of paint so I wanted to use it to take a photograph, but you get the idea how all of that has been done.
We're going to run through the design of Paul's new building from the ground up. And Paul was very clear he wanted to use Pico inspection pit segments. He's already got them. He's currently got them installed. So in order to get on with the design work, I needed to know exactly how big they were. I wanted to measure them. So Paul has very kindly sent through in this package, if I get the lid off, an inspection pit. There it is, a section of Pico inspection pit. Let's see what we can do with it. So the reason I wanted the inspection pit element from Paul was because I wanted to measure it and then use those measurements to accurately develop my 3D model for the building that we're going to produce for him. So the first step was to measure up what he'd sent using a pair of vernier calipers and record all those measurements, which you could see on the screen now. Now, some of those measurements were uh, very precise, down to a hundredth of a millimeter. So I rounded them up, figuring that a little bit of slop in the whole process is not really going to affect things. Sometimes you can make things to too tight a tolerance and then things just don't fit and you've got to correct things further down the line. So having rounded up all of those measurements, I then moved on to develop a 3D computer model of the inspection pit. So I copied all the measurements directly and began with a, uh, a two-dimensional cross-sectional view, if you like, of the pit and then extruded that out to give me the, the full 3D form and that's what you can see now. Once the basic design was complete, I added rail chairs. Now I fitted those separately for no particular reason, but it's just the way I did it, and joined five of my drawings together if that makes sense daisy chained them together added steps on the end and the drains in the bottom of the pits once i'd created the drawing with five pit sections it was a simple job to flip it around copy it and join it back together again to create a run of 10 pits with steps at each end which is what paul needs for his tmd once i determined the overall size of the pits, the lengths and the widths, I was able to take those measurements and from that create the floor plan of the proposed building. Paul and I have been discussing his project lots and one of the things that Paul really wanted to see included was lighting within the inspection pits themselves. So I looked online to find a suitable product that might help us achieve that and I came across these 2mm diameter LEDs. Now one of the great things about this particular type of LED is that the, whilst they have a round lens, that lens is attached to a rectangular body and that rectangular shape is ideal for incorporating within the, the floor work that I was currently designing. It would seem that in my haste to get the drawings completed, I'd misunderstood some of the measurements that Paul had initially sent me. So it was back to the drawing board to extend the inspection pits. Additionally, Paul required the building extending too, in order that he could get two full length locomotives on each of the inspection pits. Paul also recommended I have a look at a video by Dave Class 47 on YouTube to see how he'd arranged his lights and the staggered formation of them along the length of the pit. These changes were easy to implement on the computer and the floor plan was agreed. And so here we have the floor plan of the new shed showing the lights fitted into the pits. If we zoom in and take a closer look we can see the light units alternating from one side to another, the throw of the light coming from them being represented by these yellow triangles. The LEDs will have a slightly broader spread of light than that but this just to illustrate and give you an example of how it's going to look. And so after all of that, this is where we've got to. This is a section of the base plate that's been cut and you'll see the holes provided for the LEDs. Now remember, this was actually cut before I had to make the changes. So the exact pattern of the LEDs will be one here, 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 and here, but you get the idea. 
these are the LEDs themselves tiny little things with a circular lens obviously the side of the inspection pit will be drilled I'll make a little jig so that each one can be done just exactly right and then these will come together with the LED the body of the LED sitting in th that cavity and we've got enough space there for a little bit of wiggle room should some of the hole drilling in the inspection pit not quite be accurate there will then be another layer of material over the top of here into which I will cut um, conduits for want of another word for the cabling for the LEDs to keep everything nice and neat turning the whole thing over a top plate will sit over here leaving a nice flush finish with the pico pit and the floor material and that tiny gap well that can be filled with a little bit of filler uh, like grout or something like that there you have it well if you've made it through all of that well done and I hope there were some ideas in there that you found useful it's certainly useful for me to create my ideas in 3D on the computer first of all, and then I've been able to share those with Paul and get his feedback and suggestions for improvements. Now, the series on computer-aided design for absolute beginners is on its way. It's coming very soon. This is only my fourth proper YouTube video, and I'm still having trouble with the audio and getting files from my iPhone on which this is being filmed onto the computer successfully. And so before I go into the, the real tutorial stuff, I want to make sure I've got all of those issues sorted out. And so making a few videos in the lead up to that is helpful for me. But I thank all of you who have already subscribed. It means a great deal to me. And your supportive comments have been really welcome and really very motivating. So please do continue to leave your comments down below. And I'll certainly reply to everyone who takes the time to write to me. Until next time, thanks very much indeed. Bye bye.